everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a tuxedo pop-up box card. So I've made lots of pop-up box cards and I have made a tuxedo version probably about two years, no, maybe a year ago. Anyway, it will pop up here. So <laughs> have a look over there because this one I'm going to be showing you today is using the dies and supplies from the latest Papercraft Society kit. But like I said, I have made this without dies. So for anybody watching that hasn't, you know, hasn't been able to get that box or, you know, just would prefer to make things without dies, then do check out that. So what I would say is watch this tutorial because I made that one a year ago, maybe a bit longer, and in that one I obviously construct it all together but the way I've now started to do my box cards is even easier and I'm going to show you that construction in this one today. So I would say watch this one through, get some inspiration, you might want to take the colours from this one, um, you know other bits and pieces that I mentioned but use it in that one and those of you that have this kit bonus because you'll be able to just do it really quickly. So this is the one that I've got today, it all folds flat so it will fit you know nicely into an envelope and then as soon as it opens it just has this great look about it. On the back you've got lots of room to stamp and write your message. I forgot to cut two more of these in white which is what you would do just to go on the back but I'll do that when I cut the ones for today's and then you can just see all those lovely images and die cuts and things so I've coloured these so I'm going to colour some ones today and also I'm going to show you a more feminine version today. So this is you know got more of a masculine look perfect for a teenager and but today I'm going to go and just show you that you can make it feminine as well because I get asked pretty much every tutorial can I make more masculine cards and my answer to most of them is you can make this a masculine card just change your papers change your back color card stock make it you know a nice navy color and it's very easy to change a lot of them and also just head over to mixed up crafters which won't be linked there it'll be linked down in the description box but the mixed up crafters facebook group is brilliant because there are so many people that share my card designs in a more masculine way. So again, if you are someone that does make a lot more masculine cards, you might get a lot of inspiration over on that group. So anyway, without no more mumbling on, let me show you how to make this. Okay, so this is some of the current kit. So I tend to put a lot of mine into the envelope, the inks, anything a bit more bulky, I keep separately. But the dies are just here. So I'm gonna bring them out and I think that's it. Because today's one, that was all using product from the kit, so the papers, the cardstock, everything is already in there. So that's fine if you've got that and you want to do that same one. But this one I wanted to make a bit more feminine. So I've just used some pink cardstock from my own stash and I've die cut two of the largest frame. Okay, so this one here. So just run through two of those. One of them you will end up flipping over and we're going to trim one of the tabs or, you know, the tabs off of one of them because you don't need them on both but you'll see how it's going to come together. So two of those and then you will need to cut all of your matte pieces. So the easiest way to explain this, so you'll see they go in different directions so obviously you can't just cut two like that otherwise they're both going to say, face the same way. So you cut one with the pattern paper that you want then with that same pattern paper flip it over and die cut it again. Okay. So you'll see there it's a different pattern on the back, but then when you flip it over, you have them how you need them to be, in the right direction, because this is gonna be like this, and those will cover the back like that. So you need to flip your pattern paper. So, you know, die cut it one the right way up, and flip the paper over and die cut it again the same. Then flip it over so you've got them in the right direction. So they're gonna go there. And then for the front pieces, you do the same again. This time you have this one here and again I show you how to do mats and layers for the version that I've done in that link so this is just for those that have that kit and for those of you that just enjoy watching because again you'll get lots of inspiration I hope anyway so this one again do it the right way so I've die cut it in the right you know the right way up and then I've just flipped that paper over die cut it again so then I can flip it back and you have them facing the right direction and again you do exactly the same again with the smaller one here and it will give you these two pieces here which are going to go on those lapels so they will be one there and one there and these are going to go on the fronts of these but you can see there they will go in there and there so you can see how that all looks okay now another thing that I also do differently is whenever I do a tuxedo style with a normal box card you would have it facing one of the, the, the sides you will have facing straight on. So all of your little pieces inside will just go horizontal. Whereas when it's a tuxedo style, it opens up you know, on the, on the corner here. So 
you need to a lot of people and in the in the booklet actually they have it so that they're still going as if it was a box card this way and for me it just irritated me even last year you know when I was doing them or well, years ago actually when I was doing them because they all just face this way but the card is meant to be displayed like this so what I do is you'll see that mine are just arched can you see I've got two just arches because it's being folded down this way it, they just pop up that way and I I prefer it because it means that all these lovely images just face you rather than going off, you know, that way or that way. <laughs> so what you want to do is die cut one of the pieces here. This is your tab piece. Now in the book they say to cut three of these, but I'm saying for me, this is how I've done it, just do the one and then cut another piece that is five and three eighths by four and a half. And then all we're going to do is along the four and a half side just score at half an inch and that's really just a guide for us where we go to add the glue okay um, sorry I didn't even give them so you want to just score at half an inch and four and that's what we will have okay so you have one that you've actually die cut but then we've also just made this extra long one okay and then I've just gone and die cut a few pieces there and I'm going to do a bit of colouring in a minute so first of all we just want to stick some of it together but we do need to trim so on one of them anyone it doesn't matter I'm going to just pop it in here and I'm going to trim off the tab you see this tab piece here I'm actually going to remove that you want to get it bang on that score line, otherwise if you cut too much away it's going to, you know, affect the uh, mechanism. And that piece there. Okay, you can just see two tabs. Now we can just stick this one over the back. Now it's up to you whether you want it, I have done my tab on the back here. Okay, I would rather it be on the back, all that's going to be there is a message because it's going to be displayed all the time. I didn't want the join on the front, but it is, again, completely up to you. But you do just want to fold that tab, and then I'm going to do it this way, actually, and fold it that way, because it's, yeah. So I'm just going to run some glue on that tab, and then I'm just going to sit this in, and you want to make sure that it runs nice and even with the bottom and then the rest will just all line up like so. Fold that up a bit just so it gets used to being on an angle there. Okay, and then this one here we can fold over. This one here we can fold over and then these two lapel pieces are just gonna fold towards you. Okay, and then that little tab on whatever one it was that you had it left on, you just wanna fold down and then that eventually is going to stick. But you can see how we've got that lapel effect and it will all fold flat. So before we start adding the tabs, it's good if you add your decoration, whatever it is that you might be doing on the back here. You may have yours plain white and you might be stamping, you might be doing a blended background. You know, there's lots of, um, of ways to obviously decorate that, but I'm just going to use the dies that are there and um, this lovely pattern paper. This is actually a first edition... Chasing Rainbows. I have very few sheets of this left. And um, in fact, this is the last of this floral one, but I thought they go really well with the pink and they're going to work nice with the birthday cake and everything that I'm going to colour shortly. And again, just do this one here. Okay, now we've got these two pieces here. So in between the score lines, so we scored that one at half and four, and then this one, the one that you die cut, will already have some score lines. But in between them, just roughly... Well, it doesn't matter because we're going to flip them around, but just kind of curve it a little bit like that. Just put a nice curl in it. I mean, it doesn't matter if you go over the score line, but you just want to kind of have it like that. Then what we're going to do is, with the longest one first, you might find it easier if you just pop a little mark at halfway. Oops you can rub it out in a minute so at two and a quarter just put a little pencil mark and while you've got your ruler out with that other one which is what are we looking at here three and three quarters just under you're looking it's just in between um one and three quarters and one and seven eighths but just you want it just as close to the center as possible okay so i started sticking it and i've done it in the wrong order so you want to stick the little one down first you want to burnish both of those score lines okay pop it into that shape 
so it's like that glue on the top and then along here just mark halfway I might have already told you to do that but just put a pencil mark and you want to sit it down so it's rocking okay the pencil mark lines up with this here and make sure you're below this corner here because you don't want to see these and then just do one at a time in fact I didn't need to glue both just literally hold that down like that for the minute in fact I'm just going to take that glue off so just ignore that. Fortunately, this will all be hidden, but it also just proves <laughs> that I do go wrong as well. <laughs> Sometimes people think that I get it right all the time. I don't. I just make sure that I've made all the mistakes before I then do my video so that the, you don't have to. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, this is all hidden anyway, but that one is now going to stick there. Then with the longer one, Again, you see where I've had to peel mine off, but it will be fine. In fact, I'm going to use the Kalau to go over this because this will just harden it, just give it back its strength that it's lost because I've had to peel off a layer of cardstock. And then again, you're going to stick this one behind this one, okay? Again, make sure that pencil mark is right in the middle. And then, oh, I need to do it that way because I'll put glue on that side. So again... And you want to make sure it sits behind this one, all right? So you want to have it in line with this one here, like so. And then fold that one over. You see they line up perfectly over the top? Okay, and then all you need to do with this side, again, I'm going to use the Kalau, is you want to add glue. Just make sure they don't overlap each other. So I can see there that one is going over just ever so slightly. I'm just going to trim that one off because when it lies down, yeah, you don't want that one overlapping into that one because it's going to obviously stick. I mean, it won't really affect it too much, you know, because you're not sticking any of the arch part, but um, don't go into it too much. And now just fold that over. We'll do this last, so don't worry about that. But again, just hold that all down flat. I'm just using my cup of tea on the top there for a minute. <laughs> okay, whilst I'm still keeping that flat, I'm going to add some glue on this tab here. And I'm just going to lift that one up just carefully so that one will sit down over the top so that is now all sealed and whilst we're just keeping it flat and pushing down everything you can stick these down so we've got that one and that one and then on the front of the lapel pieces is going to be that one and that one again you can have yours all different but I do quite like them all the same so I'm going to get them all stuck down okay so that's all stuck down and then if you bring it up and you should see mine's just dipped in a little bit there but that's fine just go in and just kind of fold it back on that score line but you should have two arches like that and it just now means that everything you stick on there will face you straight on rather than going off to one side so that's just the way I, I like to do the tuxedo style so now it brings me on nicely to the decoration. So I have the stamps. Let me just pop this on here. So here's the stamp set. And I've also got a piece of the window sheet there. And I'm going to stamp these using some Versafine and on some smooth cardstock. So I've stamped that. Now, also, the reason I'm using Versafine is because I'm using a brush pen, which is water-based. So if you're using an alcohol marker, then you'll want to use something like a Memento or a hybrid, so that was an ink that will work with both. Um, don't use that with alcohol markers, because it's... Um, I mean, if you let it completely dry, it, you can sometimes get away with it, maybe with a darker colour, but generally I wouldn't use Versafine at all. So they're the images that I'm using. You can see again how I've use them in that one but for this one here I just want to do some real subtle pinks the subtle kind of you know greeny kind of aqua color there um, and just keep it really quite bright and lifted so I'm gonna put this on high speed and get those colored there and I'm 
just grabbing that acetate window sheet whatever it is you want to call it and I'm just going to cut a few strips of about three eighths of an inch half an inch it really doesn't matter this is a nice strong um, acetate as well you can use the packaging on you know um, I keep a lot of the packaging when I receive my stamps and things like that okay so I've just cut four but you're going to trim them and, and whatever so first of all stick your two largest images down and then kind of work from there because I think if you get them placed correctly then it's easier just to feed in everything else so I'm just going to add like a strip of red tape because I'm using acetate I find the red tape works really well and I'm just going to stick that one on there and see we've got that out and then on the other one again a little bit of the top there and then stick the cake right in the middle there we go so now we've got those two so then I mean this is a little bit fiddly but it's um it's not too difficult but you just basically you want to make sure when you stick these in they don't want to be any higher than this really mine's a little bit but it will still go in the envelope but if you go above that when it's flat you see that you want it to make sure it stays within that section and ideally you want it to all be within the kind of you know in line with this side of the card because obviously again if it comes out like this it's not going to sit in your envelope so you know flatten it before you kind of you know want to stick anything down um, so you can see where you're going to have it and again I'm going to have this one is going to be like that it doesn't matter if it goes behind this because obviously when it pops open it will ping out but you just need to you know kind of bear that in mind and then you can kind of look in here so again I'm going to have that one there when you look in here I can see roughly how much plastic that you know I need to keep on there and I'm just going to trim there and then again I'm going to add this time I'm adding the the, um, the tape horizontally rather than vertically because you don't want to have anything sticky hanging out over those tabs inside otherwise the card's going to stick together so again I'm just going to now bring this down so I can see that tape's behind that tab in fact no I think I need to come down nope I need to trim a bit more off so there is a little bit of cutting and going in and checking and cutting again but you know like I said before that's all part of card making and you know the process so and everybody I have different images so I can't just say to you you need this length acetate because it, if you're using something smaller it's going to look silly and it's not you know it's going to just be floating around and not quite look right so I'm happy with that there now I can see it's going to go right behind that pink piece and now you see in there how it's now stuck to that you can see it looks really cool and it does now freely hang there which is what you want so now I can kind of see how much acetate that was I can kind of gauge now that's probably where this will be and then these little pieces you can use for your smaller ones at the front but do always make sure that you stick the tape horizontal rather than vertically because um, like I said you don't want any of this adhesive visible because it will stick so again I'm just going to pop this now this one's going to go on the one in front okay so I'm just going to hover that there it's going to come down a little further but still yeah that is bang on there we go okay so now those are both in place two cards finished so I'll just bring this up closer so you can see I've added this little heart here the cake I put the little kind of streamers behind parts of it there as well and I think I'm going to probably go in with some glossy accents maybe some of my where is it this one here which is the glitter drops I've got hardly any left but it's the white blizzard just adds lovely sparkle I might put it on the top of like the little um, 
a bit of icing there or something, or in the champagne glass. But it looks really cool. I've also added the surprise, which is from the collection, on some foam tabs just across the lapels there. You've got the stars. On the back, I went ahead and just die cut some of the white ones, so the same as the pattern paper. And I just added, I had a star left over, so I've popped that on the back there as well. But I think they look cool. And I'll just bring that one back in again, just so you can see you know, how different they can look. Just the positioning on this one, I've got the champagne at the top there, but on this one I've got it down here and the star at the top. So, you know, just play around with it, but I think they look fantastic. Really, really love these cards. And uh, yeah, they certainly pack a punch. Got the wow factor here, bit of a showstopper. So there you have it. So hopefully you've liked this tutorial. And as I've said, you know, pick up some tips along the way from this one and use them in that one there if you don't have the dies to actually make the shape. But it's, um, yeah, it's a really nice style and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed today. So thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.